their stuff. Okay, so um, I've, uh, this is a presentation from uh, the summer, actually, from a conference, the ISEA conference that was due to be held in uh, Tokyo, um, but unfortunately, uh, actually, owing to COVID again, similarly, um, this was held online. Um, so I was actually in my uh, my basement uh, where I am now. So unfortunately, missed out on a nice trip to Tokyo and, and sort of made it downstairs to the basement. Um, so again, my slides are, are from that particular um, presentation. Um, this is actually a um, an output of. Uh, uh, an MSC industry linked project, so uh, industry linked with uh, our partners uh, over, over at FIFA. Um, they wanted to understand uh, some of the effects of uh, football size and mass uh, in youth football uh, head impacts. So recently there's been a lot of, um, I suppose, links made between uh, repetitive football heading practice um, and uh, neurodegenerative uh, diseases of uh, causes of dementia and motor impairments such as chronic uh, traumatic encephalopathy. Um, just a quick point to make that these are kind of um, observational links at, at this point and doesn't necessarily provide insight into causality um, but nonetheless um, this is a problem um, area for for football. Um, so just briefly just to differentiate the types of injuries that we're talking about so I'm sure people are aware of concussive injuries that can obviously have, you know, very acute and, and apparent symptoms. But it's really sort of these subconcussive uh, injuries in uh, repetitive football heading practice that, that can often go unnoticed and have potentially accumulative uh, effects. And importantly, in, in youth football, this is a concern, um, particularly as the evidence around football heading practice and brain development uh, is unclear. So what I just wanted to put across uh, at this stage was just to highlight that heading practice around the globe um, varies quite, quite substantially. So in the US, for example, the, uh, the Soccer Federation's banned uh, heading practice for under 10s and limited practice for under 14s. Um, the FA recently updated uh, their advice um, and have now uh, banned heading practice for under 11s. And again, we've got age specific uh, limits for practice between, uh, for under 12s to under 16s. Um, FIFA pre present guidelines, um, but these are, again, they're, they're guidelines, they're not specifically enforced, but are meant to be interpreted by um, local member associations. The point there is that practice varies, um, and this is likely because the evidence um, around repetitive heading and head injury um, is, isn't clear uh, at this point in time. And so there has been some, uh, some research on uh, mass, uh, so football mass and pressure, effects on heading impacts and there's whilst there's some clear effects for um, linear accelerations experienced by the head the effects of um, rotational accelerations and, and, and football mass and pressure weren't as clear um, so the aim of this particular study um, was to assess the, uh, the effects of football size and mass on head injury severity uh, in uh, youth football heading so following um, approval, we basically took some existing three-dimensional trajectory data and modeled three uh, impact trajectories. So this was a study um, by Sam Choppin, I think back in 2016, um, I think I was there helping him capture some of the data. Um, but this was actually um, some under 16 youth academy players um, taking a, um, a strike at goal from approximately 20 meters. So we're trying to recreate a scenario here where we've got a defensive um, heading clear from, from, from the goal. So the aim was to model uh, that particular inbound um, velocity and spin within our uh, experiment. So we can see the first trajectory here, so the RVRS is the representative velocity and representative spin that's based on those uh, trajectories from, from the experiment. And we've got an inbound velocity of 18 and a half meters a second and a spin of 42 rads. And we then created two other um, trajectories, so a representative velocity and a low spin trajectory. So we can see we've, uh, we've reduced the, the inbound spin in that condition. And then we also have a low velocity and a representative spin. So we can see we've reduced uh, velocity in that particular condition. So really just trying to um, isolate effects of uh, spin and velocity on uh, head impacts. We then took uh, 20 size five, size five light and size four footballs, so 60 in total, inflated them to their recommended pressures, which are all 12 PCI, uh, PSI. Um, just for information there, you can see the mass and circumference information of those footballs. We then took those footballs and then projected them at an instrumented head form. So it's just a, a little schematic of that setup. So again, you can see we've 
uh, projecting the ball downward onto the head form um, to try and recreate that uh, that end of that uh, uh, trajectory. Uh, and again, that, so the head form would uh, have a, a 3D accelerometer and rate gyro uh, in that to calculate um, impact accelerations as well as um, rotational accelerations as well. We also had two um, synchronized high-speed cameras uh, and they were fill, uh, used to, to assess the inbound velocity and spin. Uh, and in total, then we had a, a total of 81 uh, impacts. I think you had to remove one out there. Um, and we quantified peak uh, linear and rotational acceleration of the head form, quantified head injury criterion, which is a, a head injury uh, severity index for uh, linear acceleration and rotational injury criterion, which is the, the rotational head injury um, severity uh, equivalent. When we compared those with the two Ianova um, Chuki uh, HSD uh, pairwise comparisons and also had some uh, between group effect sizes. So very briefly, um, we had some root mean square errors for, for all the inbound velocities. Um, so we can see, see the results there. So some variation in, in projection, um, uh, velocity and spin. Um, we observed the main effect um, for the three uh, inbound um, trajectories for all of the uh, quantified uh, variables. Um, and just focusing on the linear and rotational head injury severity indices, um, we observed football and trajectory interaction effects. So just for the, um, for the purposes of time, I'm just going to focus on effects related to the size four football. So on the left, we've got head injury criterion, which is the linear um, uh, acceleration um, head injury uh, index. We can see for the S4 football, we have a significant difference um, at the uh, representative velocity in the low spin condition, which equates to a, a large effect size. And then at the representative uh, velocity and the representative spin, we can see, uh, again, significant differences between the S4 and the S5, uh, and the S4 and the S5 light uh, football, again, equating to um, large effect sizes. For the rotational head injury severity index, again, we can see, excuse me, um, for the uh, representative velocity and low spin condition, we can see significantly lower um, a difference between the S4 and the um, S5 light and the S5 football there. Um, and then for the representative velocity and representative spin, um, not significant differences, but we do see moderate and large effect sizes uh, occurring at that particular um, trajectory. So for the three heading impact trajectories, which were all based on uh, under 16 free kicks, we identified football dependent effects on both linear and rotational head injury uh, severity indices. So as I mentioned before, previous work um, has identified linear relationships between football mass and linear head acceleration. Um, but current findings indicate that actually that the linear head injury severity might not correspond to football mass alone. And just to put some context on that, so the size four football, which, um, which, which yield lower head injury criteria magnitudes, um, whilst it was uh, lighter than the S5 football, so the standard football, it was actually heavier than the um, size five uh, light uh, football. Um, and again, you know, these correspond to large effects at um, the RVRS and RVLS trajectory impacts. Uh, when we're considering the rotational uh, head injury uh, severity, again, previous work has uh, kind of, um, it hasn't really provided much clarity on this issue. Um, current findings uh, might indicate that the rotational head injury severity could correspond to um, football size. So for example, the S4, and football again uh, yields lower um, ro rotational head injury and severity indi uh, index magnitudes compared to the S5 and the S5 light football. So again, it's a, a smaller diameter football there. Um, and again, these uh, correspond to a large effect size at the uh, representative velocity and low spin impact. Um, and again, similar sort of trends for the representative velocity and representative spin. Um, although not significant, but moderate and large effect sizes observed there. So whilst these uh, current findings, they don't uh, necessarily, uh, well, they, don't, they provide some important insight into the effects of um, football size and mass on uh, head injury severity, they can't necessarily delineate um, specific uh, interaction mechanisms between the football uh, and the head form. Um, 
And so therefore the football construction and dynamic impact behavior um, represents an important mechanism for us to try and understand. So to put some uh, context around that in kicking, um, some authors uh, Koizumi et al developed a, a kicking uh, robot um, and then when impacting uh, two footballs, so Javalani and, and Kafasa football, they reported um, greater impact forces and impulses for the Javalani football. And they related this back to the greater stiffness of the uh, Jabalani football and indicated that this was due to different material uh, and panel design characteristics. So current study, we, we, we didn't assess um, stiffness, uh, ball stiffness in the current study, um, but the material composition um, of the footballs were, were all similar. So they were all from the same manufacturers. So they all had a, a polyurethane uh, foam layer and they were all inflated to the same uh, consistent um, inflation pressures. However, with the S4, we actually have um, a direct uh, downscale of the S5 and S5 light footballs. So the, the normal footballs have a 32 by 45 millimeter um, hexagon and pentagon, uh, pentagon uh, panel design, whereas the S4 had a 32 by 40 millimeter uh, um, panel design. So the football dependent effects that we observed for the linear and rotational head injury severity might reflect different interaction mechanisms and that might be contact area, dynamic stiffness, um, effects of seam length or the amount of uh, seam of these panels that are interacting with the head form uh, between these different footballs. Um, however, at the moment, this is you know, very much a, a hypothesis, so we need to do uh, some further research to explore um, the role of football size and panel design um, on this particular uh, interaction. So just to conclude, um, so the study assessed uh, the effects of football size and math, mass in uh, youth football head impacts. Uh, initial findings indicated that the smaller size four footballs reduced linear and rotational head injury severity indices for impacts that are representative of descent and defensive heading uh, and that further research to investigate the specific interaction mechanisms uh, is warranted. Um, and just to obviously just acknowledge uh, our partners over in FIFA, so particularly Joe Sun, who is um, is actually one of our MSC alumni, um, so he's, he's really helpful in, in strengthening our relationship with FIFA um, for, for his, his uh, support with that particular project. Uh, so some references and thanks very much. Thank you, Marcus. Um, any questions for Marcus? Uh, can I ask? Oh, yeah, I'll teach you. Do you want to go, Morrison? Go on, uh, you'll be more interested. Um, go on then. So <clears throat> thanks, Marks. Really, all, all three really good presentations. Thanks for those. Um, Marks, I'm, I'm wondering, is, is there an appetite from the governing bodies to fund the research, especially with youth football, into potential brain, brain injury and, and damage? And you know, while, while you got support from FIFA, because we've seen this with rugby before, you know, that RFU and others are little bit hesitant for obvious reasons. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think so. So we've actually got a, um, a research funding application in at the moment. Um, so it's a small part of 6, 6K, but just to do some small fundamental experiments. Um, you're right, it's the, if from FIFA's perspective, particularly, it's a tricky um, problem to, to, be, uh, to be involved with. Um, so that they have to be, um, I suppose, careful in in the particular projects that they actually fund to address the, um, the problem, um, particularly because they'll have different departments and different groups. So UEFA, for example, looks specifically after uh, you know, player safety concerns. The different parties involved will, will play a role as well. Um, but it's, it's clearly a problem that um, isn't going away. Um, at the moment, you know, we have a, a lot of work. Um, we've actually just recently recruited a, a new PhD student to the group, so Katie Mills. Um, and her PhD is looking at um, the football and surface interaction. So looking at you know, new types of footballs, different manufacturing materials um, within the football, but then also the surfaces as well. Um, and that reflects very much a drive now from FIFA to update their, um, you know, their understanding of these interactions and, and recommendations. So I, I agree kind of the head intro, it is a very sort of politically sensitive um, you know, subject for them to, to touch on, but there is, you know, a understanding there that actually, you know, that there might be some um, uh, research that they could undertake. Because of course, all of the things that I'm highlighting there are actually all design characteristics of the football. Um, 
So all of those potentially might actually um, drive innovation and, and develop with development within within football itself. So so there's a um, there's, there's a potential sort of positive within that. So actually, uh, again, if you could reduce these factors associated with head injury. Um, you, you know, there's an innovation process there to follow uh, as well. Um, so I think it's uh, I think it's an area that will gain traction, but I think at the moment it's it's a sensitive uh, line to tread. That's you're on mute, Jeff. Sorry, obviously in the US the band uh, is it under 14s or under 15s from heading football, so they're they're not building the muscle mass and the technique at that age, yeah. so the the potential for injury. At 16, 17, 18, there's even potentially larger. So exactly the the problem, at least the problem that I see with current recommendations, is with these age restrictions. Is that actually well, at what point do you then say, well, you, sorry, you're actually saying at when you transition to 16 that you're therefore safe to then start undertaking right. heading of practice, course. which and equally doesn't make any sense. So um, again, based on the accumulative nature of these types of um, uh, injuries, any potentially moderate, you know, kind of reduction in head impact should be, you know, is worth exploring if you can introduce practice back in and again, um, you know, help introduce practice uh, into uh, younger age groups. But again, again, the, the evidence on injury is unclear at this stage, which is why it's difficult. <clears throat> Thanks, Marcus. Hey, my son. Uh, Marcus, thank you. Yeah, that's very interesting. So, uh, you mentioned about the performer problem. Uh, I just want to know about the context because the culture of the club and also the decision making the game can affect this deterministic model. So that make a very, very complex system you want to solve the problem. It's not just by the one direction or the game plan you can achieve this kind of the outcome. And also with this muscle mass or strength in your neck or other things from the performer, you can determine exactly the, for example, the severity of the problem. The whole idea is very dynamic. Uh, I, I don't know the implication of this model to apply in the real context to change the, for example, they just banned everything, but in terms of the club culture and behavior change, what do you expect from these results? use player so so for me again you know it's, it's not about changing the shape or the context of the game or practice um the the result here for me points to you know can something be done from a design perspective of the football to reduce um the the uh, severity of, of of the head uh head impact that, that's occurring so whether it's linear or rotational um now, if that's something that can be achieved, then you know I think that should potentially be explored because the the alternative to that is this situation where you actually have um, no practice whatsoever. Um, so I think that's a much more extreme solution um, than than looking at well, what 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 actually can we do from an equipment perspective to to minimise injury risk? Appreciate that might then have some some other potential effects as you know if the interaction is different potentially that then affects how the game is played in in, in a slightly different uh, way um and, and you know I'd, I'd just i'd just be speculating as to what that might be at this point in time um but again the the the, the two scenarios are either can can you make a piece of equipment slightly safer to use or have a very extreme scenario where you don't use that piece of equipment at all um, which is what we have and again and I think you run into again as we're saying with Jeff the other problems which is actually at some point you're going to start heading the ball in competitive football um, and then you know what's the rationale for saying that this uh, that this is now a safe activity um, simply based on your age. Thank you Marcus I think we have uh, one one last question from Chris if you could go. Uh, yeah yeah thanks so Marcus it it's really sort of a question around unintended consequence because I think over time we've seen footballs get lighter, but obviously one of the things that's happened there is that people then can can kick the thing harder. So is there a is there a sort of a cycle where I was looking at the diagram you put on where if you change the size of the football or change it, then the trajectory then changes or it can be hit harder and. Yeah. it's almost like a vicious circle of then you've actually just found that it's the same it's the same sort of thing 
Yeah, okay. no, exactly. I mean, and that was actually one of the questions that they, you know, at this particular early stage that they, uh, FIFA actually wanted to address and, and actually get some information on, you know, what happens to um, the trajectory. And like you say, there might be an effect where you can, you know, for, you know, uh, kick the ball um, faster. Um, but then again, you know, the, if you've got a lighter mass ball, again, does that have a, a lower effect if you've got a slightly higher um, speed in terms of the acceleration and impulse that's imparted onto the, the head form? Um, so, you, you know, you're right. And, and I think the problem is at the moment that there's um, not so much evidence around at the moment that, that highlights, you know, exactly what the pros and cons of using one ball uh, and the other, the other is. And, and again, this was, you know, sort of initial study just to say, well, actually, OK, if we use if we control the trajectories and for at least for those, you know, very specific uh, trajectories, what are the effects of these balls? And, and, and you know, these were some. Uh, some findings that, that we've got from that. So, yeah, I appreciate, you know, we, again, lighter ball might change the dy dynamic of the, the, the game. And again, that's also something that, again, FIFA will want to, to look into, again, you know, again, from a, a player's perspective, you know, what does it change in, in terms of how the players move around, how they interact with each other uh, and all the rest of it. But it's, um, again, cause that kind of a question that I don't really have an answer to. Yeah. Um, or a direct answer to it at this point anyway. Because the, the other thing I thought was, was whether actually by changing the size of the ball or making it lighter, then younger players feel like playing a longer ball, they can actually then do that, which actually might unintentionally mean that defenders have to do more heading because there's more longer balls within the game. You know, it's a very, it's all really complicated. Yeah, sort of. there's, there's a piece of work that came out recently from uh, Newcastle, uh, a guy called Tierney, uh, I can't remember exactly his name, but again, basically, you know, very uh, a modeling perspective, you know, basically highlighting that, you know, velocity is kind of the predominant factor in um, right. certainly linear head, um, head injury. Um, but the, the outcome of that is again in the same context. Well, okay, let's, let's, let's take away those opportunities. Let's avoid goal kicks, for example, so you don't get a returning header at the halfway line. Um, but again, the, the problem then is that you, again, you similarly, you run into a point where at some point these players have got to learn how to, it, it's still a fundamental core skill of the game. Um, so, you know, my, my sort of stance on it, is there something that you could also do around the piece of equipment to, to minimise, or at least be certain that we, we're, you know, addressing uh, injury from an equipment perspective as much as possible before we then go into, you know, sort of drastic actions around changing the shape of the game um, and again, you know, the evidence is still very sort of mixed on, again, certainly from youth football uh, in yeah. terms of how you know, brain development uh, or heading affects brain development as well. So, um, yeah, for me, it's a very drastic uh, solution, particularly when we don't know all of the kind of the effects of the actual piece of equipment yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you.